So I guess we're doing it again. Today, I'm gonna show you again how to clone one hard drive to another for free. Hopefully this program won't get paywalled immediately after releasing the video, you know, like the last one did. Stay tuned. I hate it when this happens. I just did a video recently showing how to upgrade your hard drive without losing your data. The objective of that video was to clone one hard drive to another for free. It was a really good video and got tons of views. Unfortunately though, almost immediately after doing it, the program that I was using in that video got paywalled. So we're back again. So I can show you another free way to clone one hard drive to another. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So, check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be, because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So the reason why you would want to do this is if you're upgrading your system to a different hard drive and you don't want to lose your data and settings. Now this is a really common problem when you're upgrading from a spinning disk to an SSD or you might be simply upgrading to a bigger SSD. When you make this upgrade, you don't wanna lose all the data on your system. Preferably, you would like your system to be exactly the same way it was, just with a better storage device. Now, there's a couple of things that you're gonna need in order to do this. The first one is going to be Hiren's Boot CD on a USB drive. If you follow my channel, then you should probably already have that. But if you don't, I'll leave a link down in the description below on a video that I did on how to make one of these. And then the next thing you're gonna need is a way to plug your hard drive into your system with your old hard drive still plugged in. Now, if you're doing this on a desktop, this shouldn't be a problem. Just grab yourself an extra SATA cable and plug it in. The way I typically do this is to borrow the SATA and power cable from the CD-ROM drive in the system if you have one. However, if you're doing this on a notebook or a system that doesn't have any free SATA ports, you're going to need one of these little USB dongles like this in order to connect your hard drive to your system. I have a couple here for either a regular SATA drive or even an NVMe drive. Now, if you're gonna do this through a USB adapter, then I would recommend installing your new hard drive into your system first. The reason why I recommend this is because the USB read speeds are a lot faster than the USB write speeds. So if you're copying from an old hard drive plugged into a USB dongle, the new drive plugged into your system, then the chances are the clone will go a lot faster. However, the only preface I have to make to this is if you're upgrading to an SSD from a spinning disk, a lot of times these dongles don't provide enough power to run a spinning disk. If that's the case, then you'll have to use the USB dongle for the new drive instead. But in those cases, it really doesn't matter mu too much because the spinning disk is so slow anyway that the USB write speed really isn't gonna make a difference. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below for these dongles right here. I've been using both of these for a really long time and I'm really happy with them. So once you have everything set up that you need, let's get your system booted into Hiren's Boot CD and I'll meet you there. Okay, so here we are in Hiren's Boot CD. Now the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, this is gonna be a little bit different than my last video because there's a couple of steps that I've actually added since doing that video. So the first thing that you should do is click on your start menu, right click on this PC, and click on manage. And then from manage, you wanna go into disk management. And essentially what we're looking for right now is we're looking for what our actual C drive is or what the drive that we're wanting to image is. And on this one, this is gonna be a little bit different than yours because I've got a one terabyte drive that's currently in the system that's running Windows 11. But I also have a little 230 gigabyte drive that I use in order to image different operating systems over to the system for when I do videos. So that's what we're gonna be doing in order to do this video right here is this is actually Windows 10 on this little 230 gig drive right here. So we're gonna be imaging this 230 gig 
over to this one terabyte drive. So to do that, essentially what you wanna do is you wanna find the drive that you eventually want on your new drive. And in this case, that's gonna be the E drive. So we just wanna make sure what the drive letter is for the main partition on that drive. And once you figure that out, you can go ahead and close disk management right here. And then from that point, you wanna go ahead and open up your command prompt. Now, the nice thing is, is that when you're using Hiren's boot CD, the command prompt is always in administrator mode. So you don't have to hit run as administrator. So what we're gonna to wanna to do right now is essentially just run a check disk on our partition and we determined that that partition was the E drive. So to do that, we type in CHK DSK and then we wanna put the forward slash F and that's just gonna tell it to fix whatever problems it finds and then we wanna put E drive and then go ahead and do a check disk on the E drive. Now this shouldn't take that long to do, but it's necessary in some cases because if you don't do this and you have any kind of file system issues on your drive, then it could affect the image that you do in the end. So as you can see, it jumped through that and didn't find any problems. So we can go ahead and close command prompt now. Now the next thing that we wanna do is run our actual program that we're gonna do to image the drive. And for that, we're gonna click on the start button again. We're gonna go to all programs. We're gonna to go to hard disk tools and we're gonna to go to imaging. Now, last time we used Aomi Backupper, which is a great program, but unfortunately they paywalled it. So we're just gonna go one step down and we're gonna try LavaSoft Disk Image and Clone. And this one right here seems like a little sketchier of a program, but I found that it actually works really well. In fact, in many cases, I like it better. Now, if you have this thing come up at the beginning, it doesn't matter because we're not gonna use those features anyway. So just go ahead and hit cancel. And then from this point, we're gonna to wanna to click clone disk right here. And then from the clone disk window, you can see that we have three different disks available. Now, one of these is obviously our USB device. We can ignore that completely, but we wanna choose what our source disk is. So this is the disk that has the operating system on it that we want to image to our new drive. And in this case, it's gonna be this 250 gig drive right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And then at this stage, it wants to know what the destination disk is gonna be. And in this case, it's going to be my one terabyte drive that I have here. So we can go ahead and click on that and click next again. And now here, it gives you a couple of different options. You can either copy without resizing partitions, which is essentially going to give us exactly the same partition size as we had before. But obviously, since this is a bigger drive, as you can see, there's a lot of free space right here. We wanna actually use that space. So if you click fit partitions to the entire disk, then it will stretch out your main partition in order to accommodate the whole disk. So that way you have more space when you're done. So I would recommend selecting that one right there and then go ahead and hit next. And then on this screen right here, you just wanna verify that everything is right because if you don't get this right, you could cause a lot of damage to your system. So we wanna make sure our source disk is the correct disk. And the nice thing about this program is it doesn't just tell you what the size of the disk is, but it also tells you what the brand of the disk is. So we can see right here that this one, this is actually my USB device right here. So that's why it doesn't actually say, it, it's a Samsung drive, but it says Sabriant because it's the Sabriant USB device. And and then this one is an SPC solid state disk. That one's correct. So we just wanna make sure that both of these are exactly the disks that we want. And at that point, we can push start. And then it's gonna tell you that the data on the target disk will be overwritten. It says, are you sure? So it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually check again, just to double check, because if you mess this one up, you're gonna lose your data and there's nothing that I can do to help you with it. So go ahead and verify that everything is correct and then go ahead and hit okay. And at that point, it goes ahead and starts the clone. So this portion right here is gonna take a minute. Now there's no way of telling how long it's gonna take on your specific system, because it's all gonna depend on the speed of the drive that you're using, as well as the amount of data that you're copying. Now on mine, it shouldn't take that long because mine is essentially a stripped down OS that I use to make videos off of. And it's both going from one SSD to another. The only hindrance is that it's a SSD plugged into a USB port but hopefully it shouldn't take that long. It says right now it should take about six minutes. However, I have had systems take well over an hour before because you know it depends on how much data that you have on the system. So go ahead and let your system finish and I'll meet you back here when it's done. All right, so here we go. Once you finish up, you should get this little information window here telling you that the clone was successful and hopefully it was successful for you. So once this is done, 
I typically go ahead and hit no right here and then hit close just to cancel this program right here. And then at this point, you wanna actually shut Hiren's boot CD down. You don't wanna restart because we gotta unplug our old drive and typically I don't recommend ripping SATA drives out while it's still running. So go ahead and hit your start button and go ahead and hit shut down in order to shut the system itself down. And once the system gets shut down, go ahead and unplug the things that you have attached, like in my case is gonna be my SATA drive, as well as the USB drive that you use to boot into Hiren's Boot CD in the first place, and power your computer up. Now, if everything worked the way it was supposed to, we should boot into Windows 10. However, my system has a little bug that when I switch between Windows 11 and Windows 10, the first boot, it doesn't actually find the hard drive. So let's see if it does it this time. And nope, it looks like it's working fine. So once it boots into Windows, I'm gonna go ahead and meet you there. Okay, and here we are in Windows 10. So everything worked exactly the way that it was supposed to. However, if your hard drive is failing or your file system has problems, then this method might fail. So if your system fails to boot with the new drive, then let me show you another way that has a much higher success rate but unfortunately takes a lot longer. This other method also has the downside that it has to be done with the destination drive that is the same size or larger than the source drive. This next method cannot be done if you're cloning to a smaller drive, which is kind of a rare thing to do, but it does happen. So if that's what you're doing, then hopefully that last method worked because if it didn't, you might have to reload Windows and copy all your data manually. But if your destination drive is the same or bigger, then, then let's jump back on the computer and I'll show you how to do a sector to sector copy. Okay, so in order to do this, we're gonna need a couple of things. The first one is a blank USB drive. Now don't use the USB drive that you created Hiren's Boot CD with because we're still gonna need that later. However, get yourself a blank USB drive. It can be any size. This program we're putting on it is extremely small. So it could be a one gigabyte drive and it'll still work fine. So I'm using a 16 gig, but I'm just wasting a lot of space, unfortunately. So go ahead and plug your USB drive into your system. So. There we go. And unfortunately, I already have the program we're getting. We're gonna install Clonezilla onto this USB drive. However, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if you don't have a drive already created with Clonezilla, you can make your own. So the first thing that we need to do is go to Clonezilla's website, which is clonezilla.org. I'll have a link in the description below where you can find this. And you wanna to go to the download section. And then from there, go ahead and download the latest stable version. And then at this section right here, you wanna make sure it's AMD64 is the architecture. And then for the file type, you wanna change this to ISO. We don't want the zip, you want the ISO. So go ahead and click download and your download will start shortly. Now this download is gonna take a minute for whatever reason, it's a very, very small download, but sometimes it still takes a second. But in this case, it looks like it's going pretty quick, so we're doing good there. So the next program that we're gonna need is Rufus. And this is a program that I've used many times on this channel, so you should already have it. But if you don't, go ahead and grab Rufus. Just go into their website. Again, I'll have a link in the description below for this. And then I would recommend getting the portable version. It doesn't require installation, and you can just run it right after you download it. So go ahead and click on that and download that and it should download fairly quickly. And at this point, we can open up our downloads folder and these are the two files that we're gonna need, Clonezilla and Rufus. So the first thing that we wanna do is open up Rufus, go ahead and hit yes, and then go ahead and hit yes again for it to check for updates. But since we just downloaded it, I don't think we need any updates, but you never know. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and push this select button right here and we're gonna choose our Clonezilla ISO that we just downloaded. And this is the reason why you wanted an ISO and not a zip file, because the ISO you can use with Rufus in order to make a USB drive. So we're gonna click on that and go ahead and hit open. And then at this point, there's a couple of changes that I would recommend making. For instance, right here, if you're using a system that supports UEFI, then I would change the partition scheme from MBR to GPT. However, if you're using a system that does not support UEFI, then I would leave this on MBR. But once you change that, you should just be able to hit the start button. Oh, you also wanna check to make sure that the device is the device that you want to erase because it is going to destroy everything that's on the drive. So once you get all of that checked out, go ahead and hit start. And I would typically recommend just leaving this at the default, the write in ISO image mode. Go ahead and hit okay. 
go ahead and say yes to the warning. It's just warning you it's going to destroy all the data on the drive. And then once you hit OK, it should go through and create the partition for you. Now, once it creates the USB drive, all you need to do is boot off of the drive that you just created and make sure that you connect your hard drives in the same way that you had them connected before in the last method if that method failed for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish up, shut the system down, get all my hard drives connected, and I'll meet you inside of Clonezilla. Okay, so once you boot into Clonezilla, just choose your language and then you should be on this screen right here. So this is gonna give you a bunch of different options. What we want is we wanna go device to device because we're gonna be imaging from one hard drive to another. So once you select that, go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna go through and it's gonna check all the partitions on the different devices that is connected to the system. And here we go. Now, the next step is I would choose expert because if you do the beginner mode, it's essentially going to use all default options and we need to make some tweaks here. So go ahead and choose expert and hit enter. And then for this next step, you wanna pick disk to local disk. You don't wanna hit part, you wanna hit disk to local disk. That should be the very first selection. So go ahead and hit enter. And then from here, you wanna check what your source disk is and what your destination disk is. Now, this is the part that's extremely important. You wanna make sure you choose the proper drive here. So obviously on mine, it's gonna be the 250 gig SSD. And for mine, I'm actually gonna go back to Windows 11 now, you know, because there's no point in imaging Windows 10 because we just did that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the 250 gig SSD here for my source drive. Then you have to select what the destination drive is. And in my case, it's going to be the one terabyte that's in the system right now. So go ahead and choose the one terabyte, hit enter. And then at this point, this gives you all of the advanced options. This is the screen that you wouldn't get if you didn't choose the expert mode at the beginning. So the two selections you wanna make is you wanna go down to Q1 right here, which is for sector by sector copy. Go ahead and highlight it and hit your space bar to check it. Then the next one you wanna do is rescue. Go ahead and check that one. And what rescue does is it essentially, it allows the program to continue imaging the drive if it falls into any read errors. Because typically if it finds a read error, it will essentially halt the program and we don't want it to do that if there's any read errors you know they're errors we're gonna have to deal with them so we're gonna go ahead and let it ignore them so once you select those two go ahead and hit tab so you can get to OK and then hit enter and then at this point I would typically recommend skipping checking and repairing the file system and then go ahead and hit OK again and then at this point you want to use the partition table from the source disk so just keep the default hit OK and then at this point choose to reboot and everything is finished you can Choose whatever you'd like to do at this point. I would not recommend rebooting though. Either shut down or choose to do what you're gonna do. So I'm gonna do that one, choose to what we're gonna do. And then at this point, it's gonna go down and it's gonna give you some more warnings and things of that nature in the console. So press any key to continue. Then it's gonna go through and it's gonna read everything from the source drive. And then once it gets to this point, it's gonna warn you that there are partitions on the existing drive, which of course there is, because there's the Windows 10 that we just imaged to it. And that's okay, we're gonna wipe it out. We're gonna go ahead and hit yes and hit enter. And then it's gonna ask you again, because this is extremely serious. It will destroy all the data on your drive. So if you mixed up your source and destination drives, you're gonna have a really bad day. So just verify that what you're looking at is correct. And then go ahead and hit yes and hit enter. And at this point, it's gonna go through and it should ask you one more question before it moves to the next part. The one downside of this program is everything that it does, it does slow, but it does it very reliably. So that's kind of the trade-off. And I guess it didn't. Okay, so there we go. So typically what happens is on some systems, it'll ask if you want to clone the boot sector information over to the new drive. For some reason, it didn't ask me on this one. Maybe it's a new version of Clonezilla and it doesn't ask anymore because it's kind of an obvious question. But anyway, at this point right here, it's going to take an obnoxious amount of time. I've had this program take days before, but hopefully in your case, that isn't the case, but you know, most of the time it at least takes a couple of hours. So go ahead and let it finish. And once it's done, I'll meet you in Windows, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, everything worked great and we're back in Windows 11. That was the biggest switch between operating systems I think I've ever made. I went from 11 to 10 back to 11 in less than an hour. And it turns out that Clonezilla took about 
15 minutes with my system. But you have to also keep in mind that this system is only a 250 gig hard drive and there's literally nothing installed on it. These are just base versions of Windows 10 and 11 that I keep on these SSDs for doing these videos. However, the next thing that you're going to have to look at when using Clonezilla, because remember, we cloned a 250 gig disk over to a one terabyte disk. So if you look at your this PC, we only have a 230 gigabyte partition. That's because it did a sector by sector copy. So we're going to have to recover some of that space. We have a lot of free space that we could use. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to boot back into Hiren's boot CD, and I'm going to show you how to expand the partition to take up all the remaining space. So go ahead and get your system booted back into Hiren's with the USB drive that you created before, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so we're back in Hiren's boot CD. So this is going to be a really easy step. Essentially, all you do is you go down to your start menu, click on all programs, and then you want to go into hard disk tools. And then from here, you want to go into partition tools and pick Isus Partition Master right here. And this is a great program for modifying your partitions. So once it fires up, I'll go ahead and show you what you need to do in order to take back some of that space you have on that drive. So as you can see right here, we have 720 gigabytes that are unallocated on that hard drive. So we want that back. So go ahead and click on your C drive. We want to right click and click on resize and move. And then from this point, all we have to do is take this little dot and just drag it over to the side. And then the program itself is going to readjust the partitions in order to make room for the C drive. So go ahead and hit OK. And then at that point, we got to click up here and click Execute, our one operation that we have pending. And then once we click that, and unfortunately, there's going to be two steps. We have to move one of the partitions before we can resize the other one. But luckily, the program handles all that for you. So all you have to do is click Apply, and it should go through and do the job for you. And if everything works the way it's supposed to, then it shouldn't have any errors. Hopefully it won't, but we'll find out here in a second. So it looks like everything worked okay. Yep, it sure did. So we're gonna go ahead and hit finish. We're going to close this. And at this point, we can go ahead and restart our computer. So there you go. I have now shown you another way to clone your drive to another, and hopefully this program won't get paywalled immediately after releasing this video. I do have to say though, that I'm sorry for everyone that followed that video, hoping to have a free way to clone their hard drive, only to be faced with a paywall. Now, I'm not saying that software makers don't have the right to charge for their software. They absolutely do. It's their intellectual property, and they have the right to charge whatever they want. More than anything else, it was just annoying for me to have to recreate this video, you know, exactly the same topic that I've already done because of it. But I guess on the bright side, it gave me another video idea. And sometimes those can be kind of a lot more difficult than you might think. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think that this method is better than the last one anyway. With all that said though, if this process doesn't work for you and you end up having to reinstall Windows on your new hard drive, then check out this video where I show you how to download literally every version of Windows 10 and 11 ever made. And it's actually a really useful tool to have. As always, you guys have a great day.